Hello, Chart Watchers and Decision Point Faithful. Welcome to this Monday, November 22nd, 2021 episode of Decision Point. My name's Aaron Swenlin with DecisionPoint.com, and I'm here with my dad, Carl Swenlin. How are you doing, Dad? Pretty well. We're getting ourselves all ready for Thanksgiving, aren't we? Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Had the big discussion this last weekend to get everything uh, sorted out, but it uh, looks like it'll be a, a nice day and a good uh, holiday. Right. All right, let's get to it. Our agenda today. Um, Carl's going to do the SPY and indicator overview, take a look at, at our decision point indicators. I'm going to look at the sector candle glance. I don't know how many are familiar with it, but I'm going to show you how you can get to it. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about that. And, and uh, Dad, I hope, I hope you'll uh, add your thoughts on that. Um, I'm going to focus in on utilities. This was the sector to watch last Friday um, when I was doing my analysis for Decision Point Diamond subscribers. And I thought that it deserves a look on the show. I'm going to also show you how to use the industry group candle glance. And one of the reasons I'm going to do that is because one of the industry groups in utilities is on it. And I think it'll be interesting to see how it, it compares to the rest. And then I will finish. I have two diamonds of the week for you from the utility sector. So we will get right to it. I'm going to show you if I can get my. We do have a free live trading room. I did that this morning, um, at least Pacific time. It was the morning. We do it from noon to 1 p.m. Eastern time. It is completely free. Just go ahead and go to our website and sign up for our free newsletter and you'll get all the information you need so that you can join us. And if you can't join us, I always send out the recording to our newsletter people. So go ahead and sign up for that. Right now, as far as the sector scoreboard goes, we still have pretty much everything on an intermediate term and long term trend model buy signal. Of course, intermediate term trend model buy is a silver cross. So this means that all of these sectors have silver crosses, a 20 day EMA above the 50 day EMA. The only one odd man out right now is communication services, XLC. Currently, the 20 day EMA is below the 50 on XLC. All of the long term trend model signals are on buys. That means they all have a golden cross. The 50 is above the 200 day EMA. All right, so let's get to it. I'm going to pass the screen over to you, Dad. And what are you seeing right now? Okay, um, let me get off started with the right chart here. The uh, um, president has going to nominate um, Jerome Powell again for the uh, Fed chair, and that gave the market a boost early in the day, but it's it really just reversed. And that's not such a good sign. We've got, uh, you know, uh, higher than normal volume, higher than average volume on that move. And uh, I think that's a concern. Wow. And to get that kind of total volume on what really is considered a holiday trading week, I don't know. That does seem to be telling us something. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Because we've got really only two more trading days before Thanksgiving and then Friday will be a total throwaway. Yeah. yeah. A waste of everybody's time. Why don't everybody's they just time, it yeah. take it off? <laughs> yeah, it's a law, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, we've got the VIX hitting the bottom of the channel again. And, uh, um that's we consider that to be over oversold but uh, i don't I'm sure that that's the going to be the case advanced decline lines notice going into this we hit a new all-time high today going into that we've got uh, negative divergences on the advanced decline line and advanced decline volume broad market 
gold cross indexes, um, they are trending downward. With the S and P 500, Nasdaq composite, and the NYSE composite, we have a on the golden cross. The uh, the opposite of the golden cross is a, is the death cross, very dramatic, and uh, that is when the 50 goes below the 200 EMA. Uh, on the intermediate term, with the silver cross index, the opposite of the silver cross is the is we call it a dark cross and uh that's the reciprocal what well, right we, right now we have for the nasdaq we've got um, more stocks that are on the dark cross than that's d-a-r-k uh, than there are on a silver cross so that's that's um, very uh, shaky at this at the moment Still, with about seventy percent silver crosses on the S P five hundred. Got to do this a different way. New highs and new lows. They we did we did hit new highs uh, from compared you know expanded compared to Friday, but uh, notice that even though we hit a new all time high here, they contracted based on these uh, prior uh, peaks. Silver cross index for the SP 500. We looked at that for the SP 400. It's actually a little better than the uh, SP 500. And the uh, silver cross for the SP 600 small cap is uh, the same as just basically the same as uh, the 500. Here's a chart we have in our uh, charts list for subscribers, but was noticing on this. Normally, in a healthy market, on an equal weighted basis, the equal weighted uh, index will do better than the uh, cap weighted SPY. Um, but, and this is a one year chart, notice that from and in this uh, move here from this low is 25%, 26% for the RSP and 30% for the cap weighted SPY. So that's that's really upside down as for what it ought to be. Also in this, taking it from these lows, 18% uh, um, gains for SPY and only 12% for RSP, so it's slowing down. And notice that RSP is basically uh, pulled back uh, from its all-time high last week. Starting out the week with a red bar, <laughs> and we've got the weekly PMO is uh, below the signal line, and and it's flat. It's flat and could be turning over here quick, uh, quickly if this uh, selling continues, that would be a, a very negative sign. Climax, we did not get any climax mm. today. Expanded uh, total volume, but it's not backed up by anything else. We haven't got the New York Stock Exchange numbers in, but they don't come in until uh, much much later oh can year. you scroll up a little bit more i didn't quite see the down up for the spy or the oh, s p okay yeah. wow really shocking to me right <laughs> i would have expected with this high volume um and this kind of uh, crazy move today moving down from those all-time highs i would have expected to see a higher volume up down well down you know up. my my guess is that People were very excited when it was open and opened up, and um, and then as the things started, you know, running downward, uh, they started running out. But it basically kind of uh, you had an equal upside and downside, pretty much. Yeah. 
the bias assessment, uh, th this requires a little more thought, which Aaron will give us, but I wanted to, uh, when in the uh, DPA uh, publication today, but I wanted to point out how these stocks above 20 EMA, 50 EMA, and an NX 200 EMA, how that, while the market was going higher, these have been running out. So we're showing some weakness there. This could turn into a, a real disaster, but, uh, or it could maybe not <laughs> maybe. be much at all, you know, but I'm saying this is the kind of thing you don't want to see. Short-term indicators. Again, we've got major divergences here. Um, the uh, PMO's, PMO's rising is down to 30%. This is not updated today yet. Again, this is one that comes much later, but you see the, this is terrible uh, look based on this rising uh, price. The ITBM and ITVM shows. I'm, right here, you notice again, I'll show the, I'll, I'll use another chart to point that out, but notice we've got PMO crossovers. Buy signals is dropping like a rock and uh, PMO looks like it flattened out today. This is a chart I don't uh, show often, but it's a one-year chart of our primary indicators. And uh, you can see here on the ITVM and ITVM, we've got uh, uh, negative divergence against the rising price. The dollar has been very strong. I think it got a boost today, again, because of uh, how in fact, this could be uh, insider information going on this for some time. I'm not sure when they made up their mind, but uh, I think it was uh, getting pretty obvious who, who was going to get the nod. Gold did terrible today. Yes. But, yeah, we had a, a nice flag formation going. I did express some doubts uh, last week about this was not a rising, uh, I'm sorry, it was not a falling flag, which is the best because it shows some compression building up, but it's sort of a flat. What you don't want to see is a rising flag formation. It's, that's kind of uh, more dangerous, let's put it that way. But on the good side, we still have, you know, smiling through our tears, <laughs> you can see that there's a possibility we've got a saucer here and then this is possibly a handle on the saucer so well, it's holding the 200 day ema for now of course right and perhaps this is uh, the shakeout that will um, um, start the next leg up yep um crude oil uso we've got a uh, falling wedge formation that generally will, you know, be more often than not, it will resolve to the upside. Uh, I think we've got some fundamental turning out there um, in the commodities and particularly with oil. Uh, but I, I don't see any other course for it, uh, oil except the upside. In, in the longer term. The 20 year treasury TLT, we've got a, we had the rising wedge, it broke down and now it's snapped back and not sure which, you know, maybe that's it, it's snapped back and it's gonna continue lower. That would mean interest rates are probably gonna go higher. So let's get the uh, 10 year. It was up big time today, almost 6% from Friday. And this is a triangle formation, um, uh, probably going to resolve the upside because the, the rising trend is steeper than this uh, declining trend tops. Would you agree with that? I absolutely would. And another thing to think about too, when we see symmetrical triangles is 
they're considered continuation patterns. So typically it'll resolve to the side of where it was going to begin with. So since this was coming out of a low, I would I would be looking for a breakout. Right. Yeah. Basically this this it's been in an uptrend since uh, the summer. Mm -hmm. And one more to look at here. I want to see Bitcoin. Uh -huh. There's, we've had we had a big rounded top over here. I've taken that off because it's sliding off to the left. But we had one here and that resolved to the upside. Now we got another rounded top. So, uh, and it's not holding up that well over this. In fact, it's, it's gone below the support uh, twice, three times, and today it was did not get back above. I did have a, the, I'm sorry, I've got something in the way here. I wanted to look at communications. Yes, since it but, is the only one with that. Um, right, that it's still on a, a intermediate term neutral signal, a soft sell. But, you know, we were looking at the saucer formation and boy, it just didn't want to do anything with it. But, and it broke down last week and it's going lower now so um that doesn't look look at this point it doesn't look like it's coming around as we might have hoped and with that i will pass it back to you Aaron. all right indeed yeah i was looking at xlc i just i thought we were on the right path you know participation had started to improve a couple of weeks ago and yeah it just it just petered out, just didn't do anything for us. You got a PMO cell signal too on that news. Oh, yes. Not good. All right, so we now have my screen. So I'm gonna show you how you can get to a sector candle glance. And it's quite easy and it's so, so helpful. I find that I'm using this um, daily, often. So if you click on the sector summary, you saw where I clicked right here. If you click on that, it's going to bring up just the list of the sectors. But underneath, you can choose to do an RRG, you can do a perf chart. I'm gonna show you the sector candle glance. And so we get all of them on the same page. Now, yours may not look like this because I have a special candle glance uh, setting uh, chart style. You can do the exact same thing. In fact, I'll show you over here. So when you set it up the way you want, just go over here to chart styles and notice that I have one named candle glance. That's because I already have one. But if you don't, add new, make sure you name it candle glance, and then you're gonna always see your chart style here. If you want my sector candle glance, um, I can send that to you. Just send me an email at Aaron at decisionpoint.com and I can share that candle glance style with you, but it will only work for um, Stock Charts members. So you can't change your candle glance unless you're a member. But notice the PMO on all of these sectors. I really struggled on Friday to figure out what sector we should be watching going into this week because we had XLK doing quite well, but starting to get a little bit toppy as far as the PMO goes. XLY has been in a great move here and it pulled back and we were, we started to see it turn back up, but it's now gotten really overbought. So it wasn't really the sector that I was gonna be fishing through um, this week in particular, but utilities had kind of an interesting look to it. Granted, it's a flat PMO, but let's go ahead and I'm going to bring up that chart so we can focus in on it just a little bit more. And I'm going to use our sector charts. These are all available to our subscribers. And we're going to look at utilities. And there we are. So utilities, like I said, been moving mostly sideways. We weren't seeing too much out of it. But I was looking at this as maybe a sort of a cup with handle and I was seeing the breakout that was at least attempting to occur. But the main thing that I liked about it um, better than the others was that the silver cross 
And I believe it was actually falling on Friday, I will tell you that. But we had a rising trend as far as participation, whereas when you look at utility, at uh, technology and um, consumer discretionary, we didn't have that look. We had have, we have participation starting to fade and participation numbers were lower than the Silver Cross Index percentage. So that's not a setup that I'm looking for. I wanna see better participation. And if we look at consumer discretionary, a similar look, I saw a topping SCI and look at the participation numbers in XLY. We are seeing XLY breaking out and doing well, but clearly it's on a certain um, percentage of stocks and we're starting to lose, um, they're starting to fade. We're losing more participation of stocks above their 20 and 50 on XLY. So now you've seen both of those. We'll go right back to XL, XLU. And again, two bottoms above the signal line. I like to see that. And again, notice the participation, the, the silver cross was in the 40s and participation angling up and above, well above the silver cross index. So I, to me, that was the index, uh, the sector to watch this week. And we did end up seeing a nice little move on it. Of course, energy and financials, I believe had a much better day, but I think utilities are not a bad place to start looking. Uh, I've been telling all of my subscribers, I don't, um, I'm not gonna increase my exposure to the market right now with things looking as, you know, Carl showed you all of those charts. There's a there's a, a, a very high likelihood we're going to start seeing prices move lower, at least um, enough that it damages my confidence level on expanding my exposure. So I, I do um, suggest that you consider carefully if you're going to expand your exposure. But this is an area utilities that I think will be somewhat resilient. It is a defensive area of the market. And again, participation is starting to angle up, not down. So I think that uh, utilities are looking pretty good. But I'm gonna take you back to our dashboard because the other thing I wanted to show you today was the industry group candle glance. So I have a scooter reports um, section on my um, dashboard, which you can get to, you can change it to whatever you want. In fact, we have DP signals like I have right up here. And so we, we can look at the industry groups that have a high stock charts um, rank. They are, um, these are the ones that have moved up the most today, um, these industry groups. So what I do is I just come down here and I hit candle glance. And again, I get all of these industry groups that had the best moves today. Uh, and I get to look at them all with my um, PMO, um, blinders on, if you will, I can see what's going on um, based on um, what we're seeing here. What's funny is that when I did this earlier, the water index was on here and it is not on here anymore, but it was the only one of the sectors uh, or the industry groups that were showing a rising momentum and not, you know, you can see these are all pretty much in decline. They may have had a good day today, but overall the momentum is not moving in their direction. So let's go ahead. I'm going to come back here. And we will go to the sector summary again. And in this case, I'm going to click on utilities rather than the candle glance. And now I have all of the industry groups on one page. So the water index was had a really um, it was moving as far as the scooter was concerned, but now it isn't. So um, we'll look at it here. But you can see that when you compare what I was looking at with those industry groups, to this one, this was the only one where you were seeing a positive looking PMO. And I think on the water index, we're seeing that right now, you can see positive RSI, stochastics are rising. One of the stocks that I had on my list for Decision Point Diamond subscribers uh, about a week ago, two weeks ago, um, was uh, American Water Works. And you can see that it's doing what it's supposed to. We don't have the breakout yet, but certainly on the right path, we were seeing the improvement in stochastics and the PMO. So that's why I called it out to my subscribers. And I think that one's doing pretty well. But we have about three minutes. 
So I'm going to show you my diamonds of the week, and they are from the utility sector. So the first one is American Electric Power. It had a pretty good day today, um, up over 1%, but you can look at how this chart is really shaping up. You've got stochastics rising and are now in positive territory above that net neutral 50. The PMO looks great coming down, um, had a whipsaw here back into a buy signal. And you can see the RSI is positive here. We have not broken above overhead resistance. That's going to be the next uh, trick for it to do. But you can see that against the industry group itself, uh, it's doing quite well. And we're seeing, even with that industry group, a rising trend on relative strength. So it's starting to see some improvement as well. So this was one that came up in my momentum sleeper scan. And this one, oh, I just did a. I want AGR, Avon Grid. This one came up in my uh, Diamond PMO scan. So this one, I really like the setup on this one as well. And multi-utilities, RSI just moved into positive territory. You can see stochastics are rising nicely. And again, if you're going to see uh, an industry group that maybe is starting to um, do well or is doing well, it's good to compare the symbol to the industry group. That way, you know you're getting a, a leader a leader within that group. And certainly, Avangrid is. You can see that relative strength-wise, it is outperforming its industry group. And it is starting to trend upward in relative strength as far as going against the SPY as well. So I like both of these as diamonds of the week. And we do have a few more minutes left, at least one more. Uh, any other parting thoughts that you might have for our listeners and viewers? Can you put up the uh, candle glass again? Absolutely. So we'll go dashboard sector summary sector candle glance there we i just are. wanted to point out the look at uh s p 500 xly and uh, technology hey, those are the only ones i'm seeing that we had a an, a very good strong upside and then a reversal to the downside Yep, absolutely. And, you know, that's where, you know, we've been looking for strength and stocks, but now that it's, it, they're both really overbought. And so I am a little bit hesitant on those for sure. But yes, they're the only ones really showing anything um, good. That's all we have for today's Decision Point show. Uh, we thank you for joining us. Definitely stay tuned. Uh, next week, we are going to be unveiling our Cyber Monday special on our next show. Happy trading. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.